Welcome to the Law Firm Growth Podcast, where we share the latest tips, tactics, and strategies for scaling your practice from the top experts in the world of growing law firms. Are you ready to take your practice to the next level? Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Law Firm Growth Podcast. Now, I'm going to start this episode off with a bold claim. And that claim is that SEO thinking has become the default, let's call it lens, through which people view legal marketing over the last 10 years or so. In my opinion, it makes total sense because SEO has been an extremely effective strategy over that same time period. But as the title of this episode implies, there are some drawbacks that I don't think get discussed often, if ever. At the end of the day, I think it's helpful and I'd even say necessary to have some sort of a lens to view something complex like how SEO marketing works, because there's a lot of information and a lens helps you to focus on the right stuff. But at the end of the day, a lens is only useful within a domain. So I want to talk about some of the blind spots that can pop up using the SEO lens for domains outside of SEO. And even some blind spots from people who used to win with SEO 10 or even five years ago that don't apply to SEO in 2021 today. But first, I wanted to find some of the key f- concepts of this lens. And the first one I want to talk about is the long tail. So the concept of the long tail refers to a graph of what's called a power law distribution, which actually you know appears in a lot of domains outside of SEO. You've probably seen it at some point in your life, but it's the one that looks like a big hill, the short thing. And then basically it's a sloping slide that goes for a while and eventually approaches zero. The sloping side is what people refer to as the long tail and the big hill part is, is what's referred to as the fat tail. So the main application for SEO is in keyword selection. So think about the amount of people who search for say, personal injury lawyer, versus people who search for best law firm for traumatic brain injury 90210, right? I had to dust off some old logins to get access to this. But right now, it seems like, you know, in the United States today, uh, we see about 37,800 people that are searching for the term personal injury lawyer every month across the whole country. And you basically can't even get search volume information for the second one, which is placing it pretty firmly in the long tail, right? So the whole idea is that you have a couple of these fat tail keywords and you have many, 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 many more long tail keywords, right? So for a while, there's a lot of success to be had from pursuing the long tail because basically the fat tail keywords all got snatched up in the first wave of attorneys to jump online, uh, you know, over in the aughts before 2010. Uh, I mean, at this point, we barely even see people discussing those terms as an option without having an absolute fortune to spend on SEO. But instead of getting their volume from one or two big keywords, The clever firms, the clever SEO companies used to rank for a whole gang of long tail keywords to make up for it. And if you couldn't rank for one keyword that would get you 5,000 people on your website, you could rank for 100 keywords that get you 50 people each on your website with, you know, a lot lower cost because you're not having to compete and, you know, duke it out with the big guys, right? So how did you do this? Back in the day, you'd basically make sure that you had a page on your site that had a header for each of the keywords that you wanted to rank for, individual site, and you'd build content and links to signal to Google that you were a good result for that keyword. And there's still a bunch of these sites out there that you're using this strategy, which you'll see once in a while. And honestly, they kind of look weird from a user perspective these days, because basically you'll see pages for, you know, best Beverly Hills personal injury attorney right next to a page that says best, you know, Beverly Hills personal injury law firm and that sort of thing. And you can imagine it's like the content is pretty similar, but you have to actually manually change things. So it doesn't look exactly identical to Google using stuff called, you know, word spinners. It's a whole rabbit's nest. It's pretty, (laughs) it's a whole rat's nest, basically. I don't think rabbit's nest. Um, Anyways, you get the idea. So basically, let's switch gears into how that frame can actually burn you when you're taking it to other domains. And I'll start out with one that I had to deal with with years, uh, which is taking us in the world of Google AdWords and pay-per-click. So it's not surprising that we used to get a lot of these questions because we've always worked pretty closely with SEO companies as referral partners. But there was a super common pattern that people who would come from those referrals that were to pursue these really extremely long tail keyword campaigns. So in order for us to make this work as a PPC company, what we'd have to do is basically do a ton of creative development for each keyword. So um, candidly, it was a huge pain in the butt, but we did it. And more often than not, we'd basically never see any of those ad groups or landing pages or new ads that we'd write for all these crazy long tail keywords end up getting any clicks. What did end up getting clicks, and this is still true to this day, is the fat tail keywords. Personal injury lawyer was almost always a top performer in any campaign we ran. And beyond that, we had like, you know, slightly less fat tail, but still pretty fat tail keywords like car accident lawyer, wrongful death lawyer, slip and fall lawyer, that kind of stuff. But, you know, these are keywords that people never thought to bring up because they'd been conditioned by the SEO lens that going after that was too competitive or too expensive, right? 
Now, you know, a quick diversion on the actual cost per click of these terms, right? Personal injury is, is kind of a zany example because you know the cost per clicks are super high, but relative to the absolute peak, uh, and I would say for the most part, we weren't paying much more than $50 per click in most major metros, a longer tail keyword might be 35 as opposed to 50. But it's not nearly as big as a difference as most people perceive. And you know, at the end of the day, if you have a really tuned up conversion strategy, all those numbers would go out in the wash because your cost per lead would be lower than the competition was getting anyway if you knew how to convert it, right? At best, using the SEO lens led to an ineffective strategy for pay-per-click, which is a different domain. And even a pretty close one if you think about it because they're both Google, right? And I'm sure that along the way, a lot of the people we worked with were disappointed because they had all these super high expectations that their long tail keywords were going to crush and they never ended up getting any traffic. And my team, who's actually building the landing pages, would be really ticked off at me because I didn't push back when they asked about, you know, making the crazy um, T-bone accident, car, car accident uh, page instead of just going with a car accident key route. But basically, um, you know, they never should have made the time making that. But ultimately, it was kind of a free lunch for the client. So it was hard for us to say no to it. And ultimately... If they get clicks, great. If not, it's pay per click, so they don't get charged. But that's no longer the case. Because of recent developments in Google Ads, um, they actually penalize campaigns for having inactive keywords. This is probably a topic for another episode, but Google and a lot of the other ad platforms have been really, really gravitating towards automated bidding. And part of that is, is recommending the use of broader keywords and actually penalizing not using broader keywords instead of using a bucket of these more precise, dare I say, long tail keywords, right? So we've had campaigns that were running unchanged for literally years from a keywords perspective that just basically started losing a ton of impression share because they're having this sort of a setup, which used to be fine, but it's not a free lunch anymore. So that's a very specific and a very tactical example, but I wanna talk about the mindset that comes from working in SEO for a long time. Ultimately, the long tail philosophy is basically about avoiding the head-on conflict, right? There's always an easier battle somewhere else, and sometimes you can win 100 easy battles and not have to fight the hard battle. So it's kind of a money ball approach, right? You spread your money, you hedge your bets, you look for pockets of value, right? The second domain where this mentality is going to set you up for failure is on paid social. Sometimes we get questions for people who are like, oh yeah, well, you know, you guys are getting all these fantastic results. You guys must be using some super, super advanced targeting, uh, you know, what are your targeting options? What interests are you targeting? I think honestly, this is kind of an extension of that thinking, right? Like so much like the, you know, the hidden long tail Shangri-La keyword, that there surely must be this hidden long tail audience that pays out 10 to one versus the dummies that are just targeting broad. But here's the thing, even if we found out that people who went to pursue their doctorate in osteopathy and you know liked the page for Doogie Howser MD are the most lucrative audience on the planet, they're still getting targeted by Amazon for the pair of shoes they were looking at last week. And they still live in a state where elections are getting held and they still have news organizations that are pushing the content and they still have Buzzfeed, so on and so forth, right? The brilliance of social media from a perspective of the company is that you can sell your inventory in infinite different ways. It's still the same people. But that also means that there's really no free lunch on the targeting side for us as advertisers, right? So you kind of have to let go of the idea that there's a portfolio approach if you want to succeed on paid social. Yes, you can test. Yes, you can go niche in your messaging and that kind of stuff. But Facebook will absolutely hamstring your campaigns. And this is through the mechanism of increased cost per impressions if you try to go narrow with your targeting, right? And if you're curious on this concept, I'd really recommend checking out episode 65, which is the three biggest misconceptions that keep attorneys from making return on Facebook ads. But anyways, at the end of the day, you have to face it head on and you have to go all in if you want the data to work for you. I will admit this is super scary, but it really is the only way to go on a platform like Facebook. Again, you can keep the SEO lens and think it's gonna work differently, the only thing you're going to wind up with is a hole in your checking account. Which brings me to another point, the economics of SEO and what that does to how people approach intake conversations. So besides the power law distribution and the long tail, that kind of stuff, another really, really important metaphor and model for SEO is the exponential growth curve or, you know, commonly known as the hockey stick. And to be frank, I've never had, you know, the cojones to sell SEO services. I think the people who do are as brave as the troops, but the big payoff after you've invested in SEO is the moat is dug the assets built, and you can basically reliably count on lead volume to keep coming for months and years to come, right? Which is absolutely a great place to be. But it also leads to a pretty weird situation from the people that are going to be finding you and how you think about those people. So depending on how your SEO company bills and how you kind of account for this internally, you could have a situation where the variable cost of every lead that comes your way after your ranking is zero. And it sounds awesome because it is, but speaking from experience, it's led to some of the worst performance and in intake and sales of any of the clients that we've worked with. 
So, you know, within the context of SEO, when you have dozens of leads coming in for free, it really doesn't matter how any conversation goes. Most of these firms could probably be doubling their revenue or more if they wanted to focus on honing in their intake. But if they're hitting their goals because the lead volume is so high, they don't have to. And to kind of sum up years of working in this, in most instances, what I've learned is it's very rare for people to work super hard for something when their needs are already met. And the problem is that when you enter another traffic channel to scale or to diversify from your SEO and you treat a conversation like you have another 50 coming next week, you're going to fail. Because even if you do with any paid traffic channel, you're going to be paying for those 50 calls, right? You can't just treat this as a free asset. And ultimately, SEO has the volume so they don't have to deal with efficiency. They absolutely can. And the ones who do will, will crush but you know, with paid traffic, you have to start with efficiency if you want a snowball's chance in getting a store, right? Otherwise, you're doomed to fail. And ultimately, with SEO, you can always count on today being or to, uh, tomorrow being better today. But the thing is that you don't pick up steam and continue to move the hockey stick from having paid Google or Facebook for the last six months. They're going to stop sending you leads the moment you stop paying them. The only thing that's going to be different between you now and you next year is the process that you've picked up along the way. So basically, there you have it. You know, the SEO lens works for SEO. But if you take it for any other form of marketing, you could be in for a bad time. And one last thing I want to close with is some of those aspects that we've gone over, which I'd kind of you know, broadly categorize as a classical SEO approach, um, don't actually even work for SEO anymore. Um, and I definitely recommend checking out episode 78 with Chris Walker from Advocate SEO for how you know semantic search has really killed the long tail and that kind of stuff for more information. But anyways, that is it for me, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this podcast and I'll be back with you next Tuesday at 8 a.m. with another episode of the Law Firm Growth Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Law Firm Growth Podcast. For show notes, free resources, and more, head on over to casefuel.com slash podcast. Looking forward to catching up on the next episode.